my next guest. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a uh, of, uh, heads up in terms of uh, uh, who this next gentleman is. And also admit that I am coming to <clears throat> this interview, uh, fr fr I think, with the freshest eyes that he's probably faced in a while. And that is to say, I was an instant fan when I found out about um, what this man has done. But I, I wanted to have him on so that I could ask the, uh, the real straightforward, simple questions, which is um, one of the reasons I wanted to do this show, which is to not only meet people that I admired as well as have people on that I've worked with, but when I meet people and they know me from movies or what have you, they all want to know really the hardships and how you got from there to here, and then they want to hear about your project. So, um, I think that's where we're going to start today, and um, I'm going to now welcome the uh, founder and CEO of Tesla Motors as well as SpaceX. I hope I pronounced those correctly. Oh uh, yes, absolutely. And Elon Musk is also. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, so th thank you very much, first of all. You're welcome. For uh, for joining us here, and I I also have to thank you profusely for not bolting out the door after watching the last four minutes of my show. It was difficult. It must have been. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a very different world. Yeah. And um, um, I'm sure that there was a moment, at least a moment, one in your mind that said, oh my God. What am I doing here? What have I gotten myself <laughs> into? Well, here's the thing. These, uh, these interviews, um, have you been on Charlie Rose yet? Uh, no, but I will be, I think, later this month or early next. Yeah, yeah. Well, I... I certainly watch the show. Yeah. yeah. As, a, as, a, as a viewer, you understand that one of the wonderful things about his show that I'm trying so desperately to emulate blatantly is actual conversations. Yeah. Uh, throughout my career, I've been fortunate enough to do almost every talk show that's existed for the last 20 years, starting with Johnny Carson and Larry King and all of them, and they're all about little sound bites, and they're all about little quick anecdotes, in my case, with punchlines and characters. Rarely is there an opportunity to have an actual conversation and to find out more details about what it is that drives you to do what you do sure. and got yeah. you to the place that you're at today. So thank you very much for for everything you're about to share. We've got Twitter.com asking questions live. We've got folks. Uh, 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 actually very excited to ask questions. I'm going to start uh, pretty much with um, you know reading a lot about you in preparation. Um, all that stuff is you know Wikipedia and, and, and various sites to find out one's history. Yeah. How old were you? It's all hit or miss. I know it's all <laughs> hit or miss. I find it to be that way. Yeah. How old were you if I may let's just start here when the first vision popped into your head about working and bringing an electric car to the consumer? Uh, well, I, I've been interested in electric cars for a long time. Actually, I used to um, think about it quite a bit in college. Right. So it's been probably 17, 17, 18 years that I've been thinking about the, the area. In fact, I, I used to talk to my dates in college about the importance of electric cars. And how did that work out for you? No, not well. It's not a great date conversation. No? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I ran into someone who I, I had briefly dated in, in college, uh, and uh, she brought this up. Um, and she's a, she's a, a writer for Scientific American these days, um, and uh, uh, come to do an interview with me and actually mentioned that uh, it, was, it was a memorable date. Uh, <laughs> 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 not, not necessarily a good way. Right. But, yeah. One she would never forget. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I, I'm, I'm kind of a, a you know science and engineering guy, so uh, for me it's been uh, obvious for a while that the, the future we, ha we have to figure yeah. out a way to to, to get off uh, oil, and that the solution um, is electric cars. Right. Um, the advantage of an electric car is that you can generate that electricity by renewable means. Right. Um, and so. Uh, if you consume the electricity, uh, if, 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 you, if you're r r running electric cars and then you're you know, generating your power with solar, wind, right. geothermal, w right. which is, is increasing dramatically, by the way. It sure is. Um, and uh, if, if you're doing that, then you have a sustainable solution for the future. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously, if you're, if you're, if you're burning oil, that's, that's something that's going to end sooner or later. And, and so it's better to do it sooner and avoid the environmental damage. Uh, then, then later, uh, and, and have the environmental damage plus a, a massive wealth transfer from the, from the United States to, to other countries. Yeah, well, that's a big part of it too. Yeah. Is how do we take back control of our destiny? Quite frankly, right. Um, and so, when 
this idea came to you 17, 18 years ago. I think it was around that time that, for the most part, those who were starting to hear rumblings of an electric car, myself included, were thinking, whoever puts out a gorgeous as well as functional electric car wins sure. in terms of exciting first a few and then the masses eventually with as the prices become more uh, yeah. affordable to all consumers. Initially, what people are, are praising and also damning, you know, there's both sides of it. Initially, you uh, started with the Roadster. Right. Uh, the Tesla Roadster, which is a huge success. It, it has been very successful, yeah. How, just walk us through, if you wouldn't mind, the chronological pieces of business here, because I, this really is fascinating to a great many of us. From conception to rolling out that first model, just in terms of a brief history of the, I can't imagine the hardships that took place in trying to get this thing to come to fruition. Um, yeah, it's certainly been technically quite difficult, right. uh, from a business standpoint, quite difficult, and then it's been overlaid with, with a bit of a sort of soap opera from a personnel standpoint. Um, so, Please feel free to share all of that. Yeah. <laughs> whatever you're um, comfortable sharing, we'd love to hear. <laughs> whatever, whatever you can legally share. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll try to actually, fo I'll focus on, on the, the non-personnel uh, elements. Okay. Uh, Fair enough. And, uh, uh, because I think that that's more pertinent for the future. Um, so, in terms of you know wh where do we come from, where are we headed, and that kind of thing. So, right. in in starting um, a, a car company, it's obviously a high capital endeavor. Yes. And and particularly when you're talking about something which is a brand new technology. Right. Um, and and no one had really gotten all the pieces to work together quite right uh, for uh, you know to, to create a compelling uh, product as far as electric cars are concerned. There's a couple so, of people who tried. And yeah. A couple absolutely. of companies that came and went. Well, and some of those companies are, are sort of still here today, like you know, General Motors had the, the EV1. Right. Um, and, and actually, if they'd continued and, and, and produced the EV2, EV3, and continued that, that development, uh, there, there probably wouldn't have been a need for Tesla. Mm. Um, but, uh, but they didn't. Unfortunately, they, they took those cars away from people um, f forcibly and, and crushed them. Um, and it, literally. It, people literally crushed them. Yeah. Uh, and if people have seen um, Chris Payne's movie uh, "Who Killed the Electric Car," which which I recommend, yes. you can see some of that. Uh, you know, it's 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 amazing that the people who uh, Jim gave those EV ones to held a candlelit vigil for the, for the cars getting crushed. I mean, <laughs> yeah. can you imagine anyone holding a candlelit vigil for a for GM car? <laughs> no, I really can't. Or, or any product. Or any product is is the point. Uh, the why would you just why no. would you discontinue your product line with that level of customer interest? Yeah, that's that's. Pretty amazing. Um, yeah, and so it's pretty well documented in that film. Um, okay, right. so but but I'll give you the chronology sure. you know, sort of, and the reasoning. Why why did we start with the car that we started with? Because right. you do get asked the question, wh wh why do you why are you making this expensive sports car? Um, you know, at, at, with implying that we somehow think there's a shortage of sports cars in the world, or <laughs> or, or rich people really need a break, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Which is, a, I mean, it's, a, it's absurd if you think of it, but nonetheless, people are a little confused, like, why can't you make an affordable car? I well, wanted to give you the opportunity to explain. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, well, th and there are two reasons. W one is that when you have a brand new technology, um, it tends to be expensive. I mean, it, it's almost always insp expensive, in fact, because the first thing you're trying to do is to make it work. Yeah. And, and if you're just trying to make it work, you don't have an opportunity to optimize the cost. Right. Okay. And if you think about any anything new, um, when cell phones first came out, they were very expensive. Uh, personal computers were very expensive. Oh boy. Even even gasoline engine cars in the beginning were very very expensive. Can only be afforded by a few people. Absolutely. So. Um, Who so doesn't remember the fourteen hundred dollar VCR? I mean, right, absolutely. It's so, part so of our. In fact, you can point at almost any anything new. Innovation. It starts off expensive. Yeah. Because the first thing you're trying to do is make it work. Yeah. And, and Cell phones the size of a shoebox. Yeah, absolutely. Eighteen hundred dollars. Remember Wall Street with the guy walking walk around with that uh, shoebox <laughs> yeah. uh, phone, <laughs> basically. Um, so, so any new technology is expensive. Right. Um, and, and then um, and the other factor is. Uh, uh, economies of scale. Mm. So, in order to make something inexpensive, you have to make a lot of it. Um, but to make to, to to put together a factory that can make hundreds of thousands of cars costs you know a billion dollars or more. So, and who's going to take a chance? Right. 
And, and the thing is, it, it, would, it would still be silly to try to do that economies of scale thing on the first iteration of the technology because it's still going to be expensive. Yeah. Um, and, and this is a problem that GM is, is starting to, to, to see with, with the Volt. Because right. they're having trouble bringing the cost of that car below $40,000. Um, and and that's, that's, that's problematic when, you, when you're talking about a car that is essentially intended to compete against uh, gasoline cars that are in the twenty-five dollars to $30,000 range. Right. Um, it's very important that an electric car uh, be of comparable price to, to car, other cars of its type. So the Tesla Roadster is actually about the same price as a Porsche. Um, so it's... In many cases less. Yeah, in fact, in le less than a Porsche Turbo. Right. Um, so anyway, so that, that, that's basically the reason. It was uh, the first generation of the technology, and, and we were necessarily at low volume because we didn't have the capital to go to um, high volume uh, manufacturing. Yeah, and, and you weren't so making a, uh, uh, an inexpensive sports car. You were making a brand new state-of-the-art sports car. That was some of the negativity right. that I didn't understand because uh, it didn't seem to come from naive people. It seemed to come from people who seemed very scholared in their uh, particular areas of expertise who, who completely missed the uh, obvious justification in terms of what kind of vehicle you were actually making from the ground up uh, and it being the first of its kind. I, 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 yeah. I'm astounded by Well, a common misperception is that because we've, for the roads, so we worked with Lotus right. um, and we, we, we did uh, initially intend to uh, use a modified Lotus Elise chassis for, for our car. Uh, people think, oh, it's just it's just a modified Lotus. But uh, actually, we had to redesign almost every part of the car. Sure. Um, and our initial uh, thought of, well, we can just use a Lotus Elise chassis turned out not to be true because the weight distribution is all different, the load points are all different. Our car ended up being 30% heavier. We had to redesign almost everything. Mm. In fact, there's only 7% parts commonality between our car and Elise. 7%? 7%. In fact, and those that, are the letters. First of all, there's five letters in Lotus. So that's, <laughs> that's a bit of the 7% right there. Well, there's no Lotus, actually. Not, there's <laughs> I understand. Not, I, there's nothing any Lotus logos on the, the car. <laughs> no, but, of course not. Um, but nonetheless, it, it is, it is uh, so 7% parts commonality is actually, that, that means if, if when, when, when somebody like J.M. Ford announces an, an all-new car, that all-new car has more than 7% commonality with prior cars. Excellent point. So in other words, this is a newer new car yeah. than most new cars, yeah. almost yeah. all new cars. Right. Um, and... Uh, it, yeah, so it, you know, it's, it was uh, tricky to bring it in for, for, the, for the price that, that we did bring it in. In fact, there was some, some pretty big mistakes made initially on, on the estimates of, of cost, and that, that forced us to raise the price later in order not to be shipping product at a loss. What's the time frame from the first sort of breaking ground on the space where you're going to manufacture this car, obviously a prototype the, the, to be The sedan with. or the, you the, mean the sedan? No, the, the road is in production. Right. But uh, you... Know, how long did it take? Yeah, but I mean, they're on the road now. Yes, yes. In fact, we've uh, delivered over 300 uh, cars. And so... Uh, approaching 400 cars, yeah. And when, when was the first one delivered, the road the, the, Well, the first production car was delivered in February of last year. Um, and that, that, was, that was my car, but it was... I mean, the initial production rate was about one every three, three to four weeks. Wow, um, and then it's it, it, it's you know got up to two every three to four weeks, right. and then four, and then and, and now we're at the point where we're about twenty to twenty five per week. Okay, and wow, and now at what point during the Roadster uh, building process does the S model begin its drawing boards? Almost immediately. Well, we've we've been working on the Model S for about two years. If you take the sort of early conceptual stuff into account. Um, so you really obviously have to focus everything on the Roadster first, get it up and running, yeah. and then, but in the back of your mind, the master plan is the, the Model so S? Yeah, the, 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 the basic plan of action, uh, the master plan right. uh, is, uh, was and is uh, to, to produce uh, an expensive car in low volume, then a lower cost car in kind of, uh, medium cost car in medium volume, right. and then a low cost car in high volume. Right. Um, and that's that's the, the plan. Uh, that was my plan from the beginning, and, and that remains the plan today. Um, and we've we've been able to accelerate that uh, the, the low cost car a little bit uh, by working with Daimler, the maker of Mercedes and Smart, mm -hmm. uh, to create a, an electric smart car. Oh uh, really? Yeah. That's the third phase after the well. Model S? I think we'll probably still do um, a, a third generation platform of our own. Right. 
but, but as a means of accelerating uh, low, low cost vehicle access, uh, we're working with companies like Daimler to, uh, to, to, to get there uh, right. sooner. So uh, my understanding is Daimler is planning to, to have uh, the beginning of that uh, 1,000 car test fleet on the roads towards the end of this year. So you're already focusing on working with an existing manufacturer in terms of yeah. bringing the electric car to um, a larger consumer base. Yeah, the, 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 really the, the overarching uh, point of Tesla is to accelerate the electric car revolution. And that's going to be a combination of cars we produce and, and cars that uh, we help other companies produce. In fact, we, we've been trying to sell our technology to Detroit and to uh, other uh, car companies in other parts of the world uh, for a couple of years now. Um, and uh, it's, um, it's ironic that the, really the, the first company to do that is not an American company, but it's, it's a German company, uh, Daimler. The, in fact, Daimler was the one that invented the internal combustion engine car. Um, mm. So, um, you know, they're, they're the oldest car company in the world, um, and they're actually being... And here uh, they are jumping in with the electric yeah, car, full, absolutely. full force. Um, as we move into your describing the Model S and its conception, we have some photos that we can throw up and let people look at while you're talking about it. Um, because I got to be honest, when I saw the Roadster, um, I was wildly impressed, but I was waiting. I was waiting for a non-sports car, more of a sedan. Right. Which is what... And most people were, in fact. Yeah. And I do feel like the larger audience is already chomping at the bit. And when I saw this car, I flipped out. I just could not believe something like this had been achieved when I wasn't looking. <laughs> because... <laughs> You did an awfully good job keeping it under wraps all these months, if not oh, how the well, pro first prototype was completed. Yeah, well, the first prototype was was just completed uh, last month when we Unveiled. and that's when we did, our, did the unveiling uh, of the of the Model S, the first drivable prototype. Uh, we've been working on the Model S in in earnest for about, uh, about a little over a year. A little over a year. Yeah. So you're saying only a week or so before you unveiled yeah. it on March 26, <laughs> was it? March 26th? Yeah, March 26th, yeah. Only a week before, was it actually fully functioning and ready to be driven? Uh, yes. That's fantastic. Yes. Because that sort of thing it happens really in my business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, more, not fantastic for you. Yeah. I can't imagine, uh, I don't understand how you have any hair left after that sort of uh, nail biter. In my business, that sort of thing happens all the time. Yeah. People are rushing to get their film ready for the Sundance Film yeah. Festival. I've seen big studio films that are still polishing and doing last minute special effects adjustments sure. way after uh, they've announced the release date and, and rushing it into theaters. and. Oh my goodness, I can't even imagine the sort of pressure involved. So, uh, we've been looking at some pictures, yeah? Wonderful. Um, we're still looking at them? Great. Because this car is so gorgeous. Um, okay. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to get a little selfish here. Sure. And also lean this towards uh, people like myself who want to... who have uh, the next series of questions, which are when will this car be available to me, and what is the process for me to sign up and get one now? Well, uh, um, well, the, the car will be available in two years, which is that, that's when we'll be finished with all the, the crash testing and all the regulatory stuff and have uh, built out the factory, because this is a true mass production car. In fact, the, the Model S will be the first uh, mass production ele electric vehicle, in, in, or you know, true car, right. that highway capable What numbers of, car. of N production. Not a gold car type of thing. What numbers of mass production are we talking about? We're talking about 20,000 a year. Mm. And, uh, so when you unveil, you want to have 20,000 ready? Well, um, we'll still be... Sp it'll t it'll over it'll a year's yeah, time, we'll yeah. roll them out. It'll take a little bit of time to spool up the production line, but this will be, th these will be um, mass manufactured cars worth, you know, where robots are doing things as opposed to hand-built cars. Because the, the Roadster is really a hand-built car. Uh, uh, right. And um, you got robots building the model. A, lo a lot of it, yeah. Now, I've heard everything from the third quarter of 2010 to the beginning of 2012. What's realistic for the Model S? Well, our aspiration is to um, have the first production cars um, available in, in the third quarter of, of 2011. Mm -hmm. So just, just over two years from now. Right. Um, and I think it's achievable. Um, and I think we, we've. Um, there's, a lot, there's, there's much less technology risk and mm -hmm. uncertainty th uh, than there was with the Roadster. Right. So I, I do feel reasonably confident that we can meet that date. Um, of course, it is dependent on um, when the Department of Energy 
um, disperses funds for the, the, the loan program that they have. There, there's something called the uh, Advanced Technology Vehicle Manufacturing Program, yes. uh, which, 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 which was actually put into effect by Congress last year. Um, and then the, 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 the DOE is just uh, on the verge of, of, of awarding uh, those, those loan, uh, loan programs. It's intended to uh, provide a lower cost of capital uh, to companies that are uh, developing energy efficient cars. Well, it couldn't make more sense to those of us who have been waiting for this to happen, so we're right. glad that they're going to pitch in. There's also going to be a $7,500 rebate? To there is. There is already a $7,500 uh, rebate that was, that's as of January 1st. Right. Um, so it's a tax rebate applies to, any, to, to anyone, um, it, regardless of your tax situation. And the first base price is forty nine nine, and it goes up from there depending on yes. the size of the battery? Yes, the, the base price of the Model S is 49900 Right. Um, and that's for the, the, the basic version, which has a 160-mile range. Mm -hmm. But you can get a battery pack that goes up to 300 miles in range. Right. And in fact, one of the things we, we think we'll probably do is have the 300-mile packs available for, for rent. So if you're, if you're just you know, using your car about time... About Please do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Please do that. <laughs> because it... it, it this car is unbelievably exciting, and I think the, the instinct is, much like other forms of technology, there's going to be the, I want the everything package, and then there's going to be a lot of people who can't really afford the everything package. Right. They can barely get into the car as it is, but they're dying to get into this car. Sure. So that sure would be fantastic if they could rent that larger battery, if and when they ever needed it, because for a lot of people, yeah. 160 miles around town, as their everyday car right. is fantastic. Right. It's if, uh, 160. You know, average person drives 30 miles a day. So yeah. 160 miles is five times what the average person drives in a day. Are uh, all yeah. three batteries this quick charge of 45 minute capability? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the car will have a standard 45 minute. Uh, at this, the, all cars will come with the ability to charge in 45 minutes. Now I should point out that the 45 minutes does require an offboard charger, so you won't be able to use the onboard charger to do the 45 minute charge. The onboard charger you have to pull over and and you, well, you take the battery out. You, well, you, uh, no, you just need you need to just go to a, a charging station that's that's a kind of an industrial strength power charging station because that's that's a lot of power, right. more than most houses are capable of delivering. But um, the, the onboard charger that's built into the car will be capable of, of recharging the car in about three to four hours. So overnight, you plug the car in. Yeah, no problem. And is it going to be like my computer where I can overcharge it and then it's no. bad for the computer? No, I don't the, want to leave it in plugged in overnight? Th there's a lot of intelligence in the battery pack. It, it won't <laughs> allow itself to be uh, charged incorrectly. Excellent. Um, will I get better service than AT&T than I do with my iPhone is a real question here. Um, <laughs> the computer on board, Yeah. Be but before I get to that, there's one thing that uh, Wired Magazine wrote a very, I thought, supportive article about the Model S. And then there was all sorts of debates going on in the comment section of that uh, article. Right. And a lot of naysayers, as, as always, they line up like idiots. We seem to... Tesla seems to generate a, a bipolar response. Well, I mean, yeah. It's, well, you know what? That's fantastic, <laughs> though. I, I mean, if anything, it, ch it challenges you to rise above all uh, uh, questions and inquiries and be able to answer them all and be able to uh, attribute the, the genius and expertise of, of your, you know, design people and, and yourself. Because I, I do understand also that you've, as an engineer yourself, have really right. been at the forefront of, of the design of... Uh, yeah, I, 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 you're trying to think of the right title, but I'm, I'm I sort of probably a good description would be product architect. So uh, would we, at, at Tesla, we do have a chief technology officer, J.B. Straubel, who's been with the company from the beginning yes. and really is the person most responsible for, for leading the, uh, the, the technology of, of Tesla. Um, he's he's an awesome, you know, a great, great guy. Um, <coughs> and also like to credit you know, Franz von Holzhausen in terms of the design of the Model S. Right. Um, and you know the, the way I look at it is I sort of work with with them and the other members of the, of the Tesla team to create a, a great product because I think great companies are built on great products. Yeah. Well, yes. Hell yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, forgive me for reading this, but I don't want to miss this, and I want to. I was hoping I could put this to you to address the why is the Model S still so expensive question. A wonderful article in Wired magazine written by um, Chuck Squat Riglia. Once I'm sure I'm destroying his name. I'm sorry. Um, very supportive of the design, not only the car, but the master plan in general of Tesla Motors to roll out uh, the so-called more expensive models first uh, with the $109,000 Roadster and then now the 
up to 54,000, I think it is Model S. Uh, tons of comments posted. One reader, obviously an EV driver, hit on some wonderful points sure. that I wanted your feedback on. That really sort of drove a, a point home that I don't think a lot of people are considering. And that is wildly ignored, I think. Um, when, you know, these people are considering the sticker price only, as opposed to the fuel and maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. And when you own a car, you pay for more than just the initial purchase price. You also pay for fuel and maintenance. And it is these two very important, unavoidable truths that EV costs a minuscule of what the ICE, or internal combustion engine, uh, costs. The EV motor has only yeah. one moving part uh, on the Roadster and presumably the Model S, the only uh, regular. Yeah, this is true. Well, uh, technically, there are, there are some gears, but yeah. Right. Um, Ma the regular maintenance items really are brakes and tires? Uh, not even the brakes, actually, because regenerative braking means that your brake pads see very little wear. I love this. Yeah. The EV's actual fuel cost, they've narrowed it down to two to three cents per mile. Does yeah, that sound that's familiar? About right. That's about right. So if you keep your Model S for the average of 10 year, 100,000 mile lifespan, you replace your tires, brakes, which are not the case, for, say, $1,000 each time. Again, these numbers are, can vary. Uh, and pay up three thousand dollars for the fuel over this hundred thousand miles. Your forty-nine thousand nine hundred purchase price only increases to around fifty-four thousand nine hundred. The IRS says driving a ICE internal combustion engine car costs fifty point five cents uh, per mile, inclusive of fuel and maintenance. At that rate, over the lifespan, the same lifespan, Ford Taurus with a sticker price of $25,000 increases over that lifespan to $75,000, 75 and 500, 75,500. Theor theoretically, therefore, the ICE car with a sticker price of zero would still cost more than the Model S after those 100,000 miles. I don't think people have done that math in R terms right. of the initial investment. Oh my God, it's so much more than a Taurus. Yeah, and it will actually, I think perhaps the best way for, to, to address that question is not even to have people do the math, because we will have uh, our car for lease. Um, and so if you take uh, our lease cost right. and, and, you, and the lease cost of a gasoline car and you add in the, well, the cost of... ridiculous. The cost of fuel, fuel and maintenance on the gasoline car and the cost of electricity and maintenance on the electric, electric car, then you have the savings from the beginning. There's yes. no need to add this up over five, seven years or, or whatever. You can simply say, how much is transportation costing me every month? And you will have the savings from day one. But I will shove people out of the way who want a lease so that I can get one. <laughs> well, so, so, but so to be clear, I can buy one. If, if you do that, in fact, we're going to put a calculator on our website, right. um, uh, hopefully in the next week or two, so you can plug in and you can say, okay, well, what do you think the price of gasoline is going to be? And you can put in the price of gasoline. And what's your electricity cost? You can put in the cost of electricity. And then we'll say, well, what the pro what's the probable operating cost per month? Um, and then, and then, how does that compare? And, and, and compare that to, to cars of different types. Um, and um, it becomes pretty clear, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and and then it's it's pretty obvious that if you assume that gasoline is going to get back up above four four dollars a gallon, which I think that's a certainty. Um, in fact, I think it's going to go way way beyond that. Um, and then you put in the the cost of electricity, um, particularly if you have time of use meters, like in places like California, where you can get you know seven cents a kilowatt hour. Um, th then our car is, is comparable to a Ford Taurus. Well, uh, let's talk about what you need in your home to keep this car charged on a regular basis. What sort of setup do you need uh, actually, electrically? You really don't need much of anything. You, you can, if, if you um, are only driving, say, you know, th 30 miles a day or something like that, you can actually plug it, uh, charge it out of a regular 110 volt socket. Seriously? Literally plug it in like a, like a hair dryer. For overnight, yeah. in terms of your range, your range is going to lower, though. Well, um, a, a 110 volt uh, supply will will generate, re, re, will recharge about five or six miles an hour. Uh huh. Um, so if you're, say, driving 30 miles a day and you right. charge it for just for six hours, you've right. you've topped it up essentially. Right. Um, so that's certainly possible. So if you want to unplug the toaster and plug in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it is workable, and we actually have many roads to customers that operate their car on that basis. Um, <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, uh, and and, um, and and that that comes along with the base price. And then if you want to do a, uh, a faster charge, right? Then the next step up would be a 240 volt 40 amp circuit, which is comparable to a dryer. So it's like a dryer plug. 
Wow. Uh, and so it doesn't cost very, it, that costs a couple hundred bucks to install a, a dryer outlet in your garage. And again, that, that just operates off the onboard charge from the car, so you just plug, plug it in um, like, like it's a dryer or, mm -hmm. or a range or something like that. And, um, and, and that'll charge a lot faster. That'll charge your, the, the car in seven or eight hours. Full charge. Charge, yeah. And the quick charge will be only available at these charging stations. Yeah, the quick charge is 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 you know we're talking about something which is um, it, it's a lot of power. I mean, you, 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 yes. you know, for forty five minutes, uh, you, you're talking about something which is on the order of a, a sixty kilowatt uh, power source. Um, it, there's very few houses that you would you'd break the master circuit on most. It's houses. a bad idea. Yeah, and, and it's, uh, it's overkill and unnecessary yes. uh, for, for, for a house. But I do think a lot of businesses may choose to install that for their employees. Um, and that uh, w where this will really come in handy is when you're going between cities. Mm. So that there's, there's three ways that we've addressed the, the range issue on the Model S. Um, one is by offering a, a range of up to 300 miles. Right. And, and like I said, we're also hoping to be able to say offer, allow people to buy the 160-mile range car and then rent, um, and then rent the 300-mile range pack as needed. You'll give them a uh, map of where these charging stations are along yeah. the route, so if they want to drive across country, you'll let them know where. Yeah, in fact, you, the, the, well, you mentioned that this, the, the touch screen, the car will be 3G connected to, yes. the, the, 3, 3G wireless connected all the time, so you, you won't need a map, you can just ask the car, take me to the next, charge, next charging station, and it'll give you a selection of locations. Um, if you could, if there's any way you could put in a phrasing that just at some point the car says, "Stop busting my balls," I just, <laughs> I just want to put that out there. Let's well, go to uh, actually the, the we, we are oh, going to offer. You know what? Yes. Uh, asking you show receive. Okay. Um, we are going to offer themes, so you can actually theme your cause, because it's all just a, a big screen. Right. You have a 17-inch center console screen, and you've got a, a smaller sort of display screen on the front. Mm. Um, you can. You, you can theme your car, so if you, you know, just like you sort of theme your uh, your desktop, your mm -hmm. or your cell phone. Um, give it a little cynicism. Give it a little. Yeah, you can. You can. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Playful. And there'll, there'll be, you know, um, and there'll be people that probably want to write applications. Right. Um, that, you know, do various things. Um, and and this your center console is, is a full fledged computer, um, run, running Linux. Uh, so it's it's something where it'll have a browser. You know, if, if you want to browse and search the web, do your you know do your email while not driving. Um, while not driving, <laughs> <laughs> while charging, if you want to go sit down. You know, we, it could do things like read out your email for you. You know. Mm. Yeah. No. Uh, did, did we? Sh did you show any pictures of this um, monitor w when we ran through? Okay. If, if you want to throw them back up now that we're talking about it, if you have that one isolated, because it is pretty astounding that that whole part of it. And people go to the website Tesla Motors, they can uh, do a little more research in terms of what you're offering in that right. monitor because it is wildly extensive. If there's anything else. In it that you do want to address. Um, well, we, we are taking advantage of economies of scale from the the, the computer business, right. which is a lot bigger than the, the car business in unit volume. You know, you've got uh, hundreds of millions of, uh, of of computers shipping every year, whereas you, you've got a, a much smaller number of cars shipping every year. Um, so now less than ever. Right. Absolutely. Um, so uh, by by putting in and a seven, you know seventeen inch monitors in the computer business these days are dirt cheap. Um, and, and so it's, it's really not that expensive for us to do this. Right. Well, what it is is cutting edge, and that's one of the things that makes the car so unbelievably desirable. Um, what about, they're asking uh, here, um, Twitter.com, um, for the next generation of road vehicles, um, what will they be when the electric car have become obsolete? Wow, people are going on to the, the next generation beyond the electric car. I'm not sure that's for this discussion. Um, Elec electric car is a long-term solution. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, there's, as you were pointing out in terms of how to power the electricity, that's where we can diversify, be it water, be it uh, solar power, be it wind. Yeah. I'm not sure wind is the correct word. There may be, I mean, the, the only thing I could see as, being, as potentially being a change um, is, is, and this is, this is speculative, is a switch from, from batteries to um, high energy density capacitors. Right. In fact, I originally came, I originally came out to California uh, to do a PhD at Stanford in the material science and physics of high energy density capacitors for use in electric cars. That's what initially brought me to Silicon Valley and then ended up putting that on hold to start a couple of internet companies. Um, but it was, uh, so, so I think that, that's a possibility. I'm not sure whether success is one of the possible outcomes, um, but, but it's a possibility. Any chance for a flux capacitor? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Maori! 
Well, Maori, where's the flux capacitor? Uh, sorry, I did that on a dare. Um, <laughs> I suppose you, you could call it a flux capacitor. Flux just means sort of flow. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> of, of anything, you know, you could flux it, energy flux, anything. So. Um, ask Elon how we can help uh, Tesla Motors get the federal loan. Uh, and also where the factory be. The factory be here in Los Angeles. I don't know if you want to get specifics about where in Los Angeles. Is it that the SpaceX where you have the... Yeah, the, the Tesla Design Studio is inside the SpaceX rocket factory. Right. Um, and the, you know, the design center is in, in Southern California because the, the world's best automotive design talent is actually right here in Southern California. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Um, and uh, and Fra Franz uh, von Holzhausen, our designer, uh, head of design, was, was based here when he worked at Mazda uh, before joining us. And um, and, and just, there's just a really big town pool. So um, and rather than they go you know go rent a, a whole separate space, um, it, it was just easier to allocate some space in, in the, sp the SpaceX rocket factory uh, for the Tesla design. Also made it obviously very convenient for me to work with with Franz, yes. um, who, who's a great guy to work with. We're very much on the same wavelength. It's, it's, it's great actually. So um, as far as hel helping on the DOE front, um, I, I actually think we're okay. I, I, Definitely, any any voice of support is is great. Um, you know, mentioning it to your uh, congressman or senator. Uh, that does help, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If um, they feel a groundswell, if they feel that the public there's a public demand. Yeah, I think it's it's helpful to um, to let your congressman and senator know that you think uh, companies like Tesla should get a portion of the a ATVM program. And I should mention, uh, our, our, what we're asking for is really a tiny, we're, we're only asking for about 1.5% uh, of the ATVM program. The, the vast majority of it will, will go to GM, Ford, Chrysler. You know, they'll, they'll get 98%. 1.5% one, one <laughs> you're asking for? Yeah, we're asking for 1.5%. Right? I think it's not, not, not a big ask. Um, and, and I, th I Can think we get Barack on the phone? <laughs> People? Tyler? Crude? What are you laughing about? Um, yeah, it doesn't seem uh, unreasonable at all to be asking for the one and a half percent. Um, I, I, th I think we can probably put it to better use than GM. Yes. Well, you know what? I would love to have uh, them in this room and 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 watch that debate. Quite frankly, um, SpaceX came first, and yeah, it is a uh, a, a thriving. Uh, industry that uh, only uh, recently actually stepped up its game or so it seems from what I'm reading. You want to share some of the latest news? Uh, well, with SpaceX, we got to orbit uh, last year, right. which is a fairly big deal. Um, our, our, our rocket is arguably the first uh, completely privately developed rocket to, to reach orbit, uh, although there's some dispute on that front. Um, but it's unequivocally uh, the, the first uh, liquid fuel um, privately developed rocket to reach orbit. Um, and, and that's a tough thing. Most countries can't do that. So it's, it's a And how many years did that take? Uh, th that was about six years. Yeah. From, yeah, from start to reaching all. Uh, yeah. The, yeah, six and years. And so when the money is just evaporating, as you're pouring all the time and energy in your life into this vision, uh, how often, people want to hear about the struggle, how often does the thought enter your mind, I, I, you know, it's just, it's too much? There's other things I want to do with my life. Because I, I have to assume this is all consuming for you. Um, well, there's, I mean, I spend a lot of time with my kids. I mean, there's really just sort of, th I guess, four things that I do. Um, there's uh, uh, SpaceX and Tesla, which take about for, for roughly half of my business time each. Uh -huh. um, then there's my, my kids, and then I sleep. I mean, that's like the four things I do. <laughs> right. And, and, I, and often sleep doesn't. This doesn't, I don't get a lot of sleep That sometimes. becomes the commodity, doesn't it? Yeah, it was definitely difficult. Um, the fourth quarter of, of last year was, was very difficult. Um, and, uh, y yeah, it was... Well, it, it was, was very for, difficult. For, for, for everyone, I think. Yeah, for yeah. everyone, until uh, we found out, of course, that Britney Spears is back. And then it all sort of lightened our load a little bit. Absolutely. Um, this, this, there was a glimmer of hope. <laughs> right. <laughs> well put. <laughs> That's what I would have called it as well, a glimmer. Um, so six years... Yeah. From uh, from the from the design and from the vision, and then last year your first complete orbit. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We, we came close on on our second and third flights. Uh, we did reach uh, space, um, but we did not reach orbital velocity uh, in, in our second and third flights. And, and then our fourth flight we reached orbital velocity. And then we've got no, we've got another flight coming up um, in about 
towards the end of this month, um, and that's going to uh, uh, deliver a, a satellite for Malaysia. Um, you have to uh, take on some commercial uh, cargo. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have uh, a wide variety of customers. Actually, N NASA is our biggest customer, right? Uh, by far. I, um, and uh, what? But, but we have many other customers as well. Um, Sweden is a customer. Malaysia, as I mentioned, uh, Canada, um, and uh, and then we also have some uh, purely commercial uh, customers. We'll be launching a satellite for um, Avanti, which is a, um, a European uh, broadcast satellite uh, company, um, and uh, yeah. So. Expound a, a little bit, if you can, with your relationship with NASA, because I, I think this is pretty fascinating, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, well, I love NASA. I want to say that. <laughs> NASA is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, they believe in you. So I they tend do. to like people <laughs> who, who, I tend to agree with people who agree with me, so I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, NASA has actually been um, really supportive. Right. Um, and uh, uh, SpaceX w would not have gotten as far as it did without NASA's help. So I want to acknowledge that. Um, and uh, in December of, of last year, NASA actually gave us the, the contract uh, to uh, uh, be the, the replacement for the space shuttle as far as cargo is concerned. Um, so the space shuttle retires at the end of next year. And, um, and then NASA does have a, a long-term plan for developing a, a launch vehicle um, and a spacecraft um, called the Ares Orion Project. And that, but that's intended to go back to the moon. So, and, and that's, you, you, that's only going to see flight probably around the 2016 time frame. Wow. Um, so there's, there's kind of a gap of five or six years. Um, and, and so, but we still have a space station up there that we've got to service. Right. So what do we do during that gap? And, um, and, and that's why NASA took the um, unprecedented step of saying, okay, well, let's see what the private sector can do. Um, and let's, uh, let's You stepped up. Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, and, and so Na NASA's felt confident enough to award, uh, they, they, so they, awarded, they actually did a competition, and, and they, there were 20 missions, and we got 12 of the 20. Um, eight of them were awarded to another company, Orbital Sciences, and then there was, there was a third uh, competitor, which was a joint venture of Boeing, Lockheed, and Align Tech, Sy Align Tech Systems, which actually did not get any of the missions. So that was a, a big upset. Um, a huge upset. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, I wouldn't blame any of your engineers when that moment happened if they sort of rallied together and said, suck it to those people. Right. Um, and so it, it was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I think it. we said suck <laughs> <laughs> I knew I could break uh, it. Boeing and Lockheed are fine company. Oh, of course, please. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing just fine without my little cynicism. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. Um, so so you're, you're well established now with your relationship with NASA. They're clearly yeah. depending on you. You've won this competition. They, they really are depending on us. Yes. And so it, it's actually quite a big responsibility, um, which we take very seriously. And uh, so we're working very hard to make sure we don't let them down. Yeah, and, and you, just, you were just in Washington just before the Model S announcement, right, about uh, um, the... Uh, well, tell us what, what you were actually... You were well, I'm in, I'm in Washington quite a lot because right. uh, well, there's, there's a lot of interests there, both for, for SpaceX and Tesla. Right. Um, and there was a bit of an announcement right before the March 26th you were there. I was reading yeah. something where you had to ad address uh, a group. Um, oh, so, so maybe it was the, the satellite. There's a big satellite conference yes. in, in D.C. Yes. every year. Yeah. So, yeah, I, w I gave a, 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 key, a keynote there. Right. Um, yeah, and it was just basically giving people an update on, on where uh, SpaceX is and what, what progress we're making. and That's what I was reading about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, just basically t telling people um, where we are and, and, and um, you know, we're expecting to, to uh, launch our big rocket, the Falcon 9, um, and w with the, the Dragon spacecraft later this year. Right. And I think you were discussing the Falcon 9. Right. The, the vehicles we've launched to date are the Falcon 1, which is a, a much smaller vehicle. Yes. So Falcon 9 is a, is, is, is a, quite, is a very big vehicle. In fact, it's going to be the most powerful single-core vehicle in the U.S. fleet. By single-core, I mean without using side boosters. Um, and, then, and then the Falcon 9 Heavy, which is uh, the Falcon 9 with side boosters, uh, will actually be the most uh, highest payload-capable uh, vehicle in the world. Um, and, and uh, when did you share that piece of news? Was that something that was... That's actually, no, it's been on our website for a while, though. I'm not uh -huh. sure people believed we'd actually do it. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there were people waiting for that announcement and also now waiting for the failure. You must have a lot of the surrounding people. I mean, people who uh, are competitive with you, I speak of, who uh, 
a part of them want you to succeed because it opens up opportunities for them. Right. But at the same time, if it's anything at all like the business of, of show, there's such competition that even those who succeed feel the sense of there isn't enough to go around. And if you succeed, it means I won't. Is there more of a camaraderie from your standpoint? Well, it, it, it depends on who, um, who you're talking about. So that there's some uh, companies where we are a great enabler mm -hmm. um, because we're, we're fundamentally SpaceX is in, in the transportation business um, and uh, the, if, if transportation improves then those who who use transportation will find that their business has improved you know just as um, when they finished the transcontinental railway in the you know in the, in the early days of you know, early history of the United States it, it was a huge boon to uh, businesses in the East Coast, businesses mm, in the, you know, people could travel back and forth, goods could, could transport a lot easier, so it, it was really helpful to everyone except probably the stagecoach companies. Um, so right. they, they didn't like it that much. No, they didn't. Um, so if, you know, but so I think, I think there's probably, there's more of the space business that, that uh, wants us to succeed than, than doesn't want us to succeed, it, you know, yeah. Uh, and so you're, are you feeling more scrutiny about the the Model S in terms of competitiveness, because here's, you know, just based on the documentary, The Killing of the Electric Cars, yeah. this has happened before. The name itself, Tesla, comes from someone who was obviously squashed by the bigger uh, electric companies. Yeah, you know, Nikola Tesla did, did pretty well for most of his life, although he went kind of bonkers at the end. Hopefully that doesn't happen to me. He, um, yes, we're all pulling for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean in terms of who got credit for what. That seemed to be the uh, the struggle in terms of the memory. If you ask your average American on the street what they know about uh, Nikolai, it says you're not going to get a lot of. Yeah, Edison. In, I think in the popular um, yes. mindset, uh, you know, Tesla get, gets less uh, uh, notice than than Edison. Uh, in in science, in the sort of scientific world, uh, Tesla gets more a, a, a attention and more credit than, than Edison. Yeah. Um, and they they both. Uh, I think they're both really great man and, and did, did amazing things and um, you know uh, the, the little bit of rivalry is probably a good thing. It's um, a great thing. So so it's um, you know I think that they're, they're both great. We, we, we thought we'd recognize Tesla in, in uh, naming the, the, the car company better than naming it the, the Elon car company or something like that. I'm proud of um, you for letting that go. <laughs> sure it crossed your mind at some point. All right how many people have signed up already officially signed up and are waiting delivery on the Model S? Uh, I, read I don't know the exact number today, but yeah. uh, we're well over 500. Over 500. Um, and uh, and how do I become the update. next one? Oh, just go to the website. Uh -huh. um, you can just click the button. But I've got you right here. Are there forms that we could <laughs> fill out right now? It, it literally, you, you can... Um, how easy is it? So you go to the website and you follow the simple instructions, well, clicking, yes, me, I want one. As, as someone who, who did PayPal, um, you can imagine that I've, I'm a big focus on making things really easy. Yes, um, on, nice job. And on online. <laughs> Thanks. <Yes. laughs> um, so we spend a lot of time at PayPal trying to make things super easy. Um, and, and actually, if somebody goes to the Tesla Motors, just go to, just go to teslamotors.com, right. click on the Buy tab, you should be able to uh, put down a reservation for a Model S in under five minutes. I like that a lot. Yeah, okay. and it, it's a $5,000 reservation, which is refundable. Um, and, and I'm, you know, personally standing behind the, the, the reservation payments. So if, if anyone is concerned about us going out of business, uh, the only thing you should worry about is, is if I get hit by a bus. Uh -huh. And I'm trying to cover that one as well by uh, having, getting some key man insurance in place. So if I do get hit by a bus, this... You know, really? There's the bus factor? That's still an opportunity? Well, something, you know. Because <laughs> I was just thinking... Not a lot of buses in LA, fortunately. I'm safe on that front. 500 people times $5,000, you should be able to cover that fairly easy. Yeah, uh, it's not going to, I don't think it's going to be, I don't think people's deposit, well, there is, I, we can't call it a deposit for legal reasons, but it, people's reservation right. uh, payment uh, is, uh, I think, is, is, is safe. Um, but I'm glad we were able to uncover the bus factor. This is very important, I think, to a lot of customers. They need to know. It's yeah. Not, not well, I mean, there's still, I mean, there's a tiny bit of risk. Um, Your kryptonite, apparently, is the bus. Right. <laughs> well, so th th there's always a tiny bit of risk, and the tiny bit of risk would be uh, if Tesla goes out of business um, and I lose er er all of my assets mm -hmm. um, and, and don't die. Um, and don't die. And don't die. There's the rub. In that so and, and, and for the rest of my life, I'm never able to repay to build up my assets to the point where people can be repaid. That would be the circumstance under which people would lose well, their, their money. You know what? I'm glad you did the math on that because I'm sure a lot of people have also. And, uh, and 
well. So if the if bus does hit me, it, it needs to kill me, <laughs> not partially uh, paralyze me or something. For those of you <laughs> who currently uh, uh, call bus driving your profession, <laughs> uh, do us all a favor and stay the hell away from this man, <laughs> if at all possible. Uh, hit the dog, if I may. Um, Mr. Musk, I, I cannot thank you enough for sharing as, as much as you have. I, I would love to, uh, to have you on again in terms of uh, watching the progress of uh, SpaceX as well as uh, Tesla because I am wildly curious and I know an awful lot of people are as well that are just starting to discover what's been going on now in your life for the last six years in the case of uh, uh, SpaceX and the last uh, uh, Roadster rather and right. uh, and now the last couple of years with the Model S and uh, yeah. waiting with bated breath to see where this company is going and 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 praying with you and for you that it succeeds beyond your dreams. Thanks. Actually, you know what? I, you haven't touched on any personal stuff, which is which is fine. But you know, if, I didn't if, want to, but I'm happy to go there. <laughs> what would you like to talk about? Well, there there there, there is a common misperception which which does sort of drive me crazy a little bit. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I. Um, I sort of my, my wife and I are getting or my ex-wife and I are getting getting divorced and and we why well, I've been there yeah yeah so sorry um, the divorce filing took place in in sort of June of June of last year and so it takes a while for these things to to, to get done boy does it yeah um, and uh, although my ex-wife to her credit uh, made it clear in her blog that that the marriage was over for reasons that had nothing to do with anyone else um, uh, in fact she wanted to get divorced at least as much as I did if not more um, <laughs> that takes um, a little stress and, and guilt away sure right nice. um, th there there um, there have been a few articles which have 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 said that I left my wife and five kids for for someone else I'm glad you brought this up um, I wasn't about to go there but well, for <laughs> God's sakes let's clear a little air here it, I think yeah you know that would be very frustrating to me as well if that was the if that was in uh, press releases and articles written about me when I was trying to change the face of the, the automobile business but yeah let's talk about it well it's just if, whatever if, you'd if, like to share if I read that about someone I would think what a dick all right um, and 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 that would be true. I mean, if if, if it were true, but okay. but actually it, it's not because I, I would never leave my kids. Um, in fact, I see them five days a week. <laughs> they they keep you from sleeping. We talked about that before. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what what are the age range of these five children of yours? Uh, well, the, the the twins are are turning five, <coughs> and that the triplets are turning uh, are two and a half. Wow, twins and triplets. Yeah. That makes the five. Wow, wow. Uh, well, this. So, so anyway, it, it's, yes, just, it's just a po po point of clarification. Um, th and there was an article, I think, um, you know, there have been, been a few articles where, where that's sort of been mentioned as an offhand comment. In fact, they, they weren't even, th they were positive articles. They just mentioned it sort of off the cuff. Um, but I, it, it, and, and they were corrected in the online version. Um, mm. but, it, but, but, you know, the, it's difficult to sometimes correct these perceptions. On the surface of it may seem that, that, that that's, you know, that I left my wife for someone else, but I, di I didn't. And, um, well, this is the problem that comes with the limelight, you see. You've gone beyond your profession and your expertise and your business life, and you're now being scrutinized for your personal life. And I do know a great deal about that uh, from, of course, the business that I chose many years ago. Right. And it's never fair. It's never uh, balanced. And it's always about selling an article or a paper or a magazine. And whatever it takes to throw you under that bus, if we may go back to that unfortunate spot, they will do it. And um, I am more than happy to offer you this forum to clear any air on, in regards to this at any time. Uh, because a lot of times, quite frankly, people in show business, they, they're sort of taught to stay away from it. You know what, don't, just leave it. They're going to write whatever they want to write. And I think that it's pretty damn courageous to sit here and say, you know what, this is what's being said about me, and I don't appreciate it. So yeah, I commend you for that. Well, I think it's and just thank to you, correct. The, I mean, it's not. I'm certainly, you know, not someone who who is. I mean, I, I I'm no saint, but but I. I'll I, say. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to say. Um, but but I generally try to do the right thing, and and uh, you know, so, um, and it's not like you know, like I said, if if people actually were to say, go look at my ex-wife's blog or something, they'd they'd, they'd know. Okay, that the marriage came to an end because. Do a little we more sort of research. Grew apart and, yeah. and just wasn't working, and we're making each other unhappy. So, 
but there are people that don't always know to do that. And, no. and so, anyway, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing all of that. I really genuinely appreciate it, and I think the people uh, watching appreciate it as much. The whole idea of this show was to not just be an infomercial about uh, a film or a, a project or the design of an electric car. It was really about getting to know the people behind uh, their work and their lives and what it takes in, in some cases to make history. And so on, on that level, I thank you very much. All right, well, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Elon Musk, and uh, I, uh, I want to uh, not only thank him, but my first guest, uh, Jason Antoon. This has been um, a, uh, a, a, a remarkable uh, uh, day and evening for me and for this show on many levels. And um, I want to take the opportunity this time, unlike the previous times, of thanking my crew because for some reason we're wrapping up all the equipment after the show and I the first thing that crosses my mind is I didn't thank everyone so Jason Calcanis thanks for nothing let's start there <laughs> uh, then we go over to uh, Tyler and Crude and Jamie and uh, Jason McIntyre and Kate Shorter um, and uh, Professor Chen I like to call him and where's Jacob is he out there crawling around somewhere you're not getting any credit I'm not thanking you um, and, uh, and Gypsy Kinnear from across the uh, uh, country lines into Canada, and uh, Josh, who he sent here today to help out. And um, I want to thank all of you who uh, are insisted on watching us live and contributed. Um, I did not put you on the spot to play the Larry King game. I'm not sure I should let you slide. <laughs> did you contemplate that at all? I'm not 100% not sure how one plays the Larry King game. <laughs> okay. But, uh, well, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Um, <laughs> I'm going to insist that you come back with a Larry King game prepared. Okay. I'm going to let you off the hook on right. this one because uh, I feel like um, I've, I've more than pressed my luck with your appearance here, and I thank you for your time. I sincerely do. All right. You're welcome. Um, Okay, so thanks to everyone involved, and thank you for watching, and um, please join us again, my guests, next week on Easter Sunday. Uh, he's called Yid Vicious, the pit bull of stand-up comedy, Bobby Slayton. I got myself a funny Jew for Easter. That's what <laughs> I did. I also got the star uh, of an amazing documentary called Super High Me, a great, great talent, Mr. Doug Benson. We just uh, lined up a few other new guests. I'm very excited if you're a fan of the... Uh, a runaway hit, uh, Mad Men, the Golden Globe winning uh, star of that show, John Hamm, has agreed to join us. It'll either be the 19th or the 26th, but on the 19th for certain, the Academy Award winning writer of The Usual Suspects. Not a bad film, so I've been told. <laughs> uh, Felicia Day, the beginning of May, those of you who enjoy The Guild online and everything that it's becoming there beyond. A um, lot of great uh, other people who have said yes, and I'll be making more announcements. Thank you for all your involvement and help. Uh, don't forget our contest. We skipped three degrees of Kevin Pollack. We'll get back to that next week. And uh, don't forget your suggestions for the Larry King game. And thank you for all your questions. I'm sorry we didn't get to them. Um, and I'll see you next week. Okay. <laughs>